have a page here with a list of products, and I also have a search field to search the products based off of a name. This seems pretty simple, right? Well, that is actually deceptively simple. You can see inside of the product model I have set up that the query needed to find the available products is pretty complicated. First, I need to make sure that the products are released and that they aren't discontinued and that I have a couple in stock and that the name is like whatever the user searched on. So a fairly long SQL query being performed here. I also don't like that we have a lot of variables tossed at the end here and we have to mix and match them with the proper question marks and so on. Now there are a variety of ways to improve this. Probably the biggest improvement we can make is moving parts of this into other name scopes and then search using those. But we would still be using SQL and then we have to worry about database differences such as this like clause here. In uh, most databases this would perform a case insensitive like but if we decide to switch to Postgres then we have to switch this to I like to be case insensitive and so on. It would be nice if we could have a little bit of consistency here and abstract this out. Now we could also use Errol here to do this, but that is sort of a mess in itself. Trying to work with Errol directly can get pretty complicated. Now if you'd rather not mix SQL into your Ruby code, check out the Squeal gem by Ernie Miller. He also wrote the MetaWare gem, which I've covered in the past. Now Squeal provides a DSL, so you can write your queries in Ruby without falling back to SQL. Let's try it out by using it in this application. First I'll go into the bottom of my gem file and add the squeal gem into there and you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Now let's experiment with this a bit in the Rails console. Now what squeal allows us to do is pass a block to a where call and we can use the squeal DSL inside of this block. So this allows us to call any column as a method inside of here. So we can say release dat and perform any operators on this. So let's say release dat less than uh, three months ago. And that'll uh, translate into an SQL query for us and fetch the ma products matching that query. Now, even though I generally put spaces around blocks in Ruby, the convention for the squeal DSL seems to prefer no spaces. So I'll be following that through the rest of this episode but it has the same effect so you can choose the approach that you prefer. Now the object that's returned from this call is actually an active record relation object so you can use it alongside other scopes that you'd use inside of Rails. Also, Squeal uses a lot more than just active record relation. It's built upon Errol so it uses that to convert the query into SQL. You can see this if you check out the Squeal readme, a table is provided here listing out the various operators and the first column here shows you the operator that's used in SQL. The second here is the predication column which is used by Errol. So these are the various methods you can call directly on Errol and those are provided by Squeal as well. And the operators and aliases are specific to Squeal but it's just a convenient way to generate queries. So instead of using the less than operator that Squeal provides, we can call the Errol method directly, LT, and that will perform the same less than query. Another thing that Squeal provides are AND and OR operators for combining multiple conditions. So in addition to this release at clause, let's also require that the product's price is greater than 20. Now when doing this, it's important that you wrap the clauses in parentheses so that way Ruby understands uh, the precedence properly. And there we go, that found the product matching those two clauses. Now what I really like about this is it makes the OR operator uh, really convenient to do, otherwise an active record is pretty tricky. So just use the pipe symbol for an OR operator and that will find products matching either one. So now we have enough information to translate this SQL query into squeal. So I'm just going to wrap this in a call to a block and I'm going to pass any values directly in instead of using the question mark here. And set the stock value, and the name is like this given query. Now as for this like clause here, this can be written uh, similar to a uh, regular expression operator, and by the way, that'll use the I like clause in Postgres, so it'll do a case insensitive comparison. Then we just need to wrap some of these in parentheses and use the ampersand and um, pipe operators for the and and or checks and this is null uh, clause so we can use equals equals nil for that and then a couple more changes here to get it carried over 
And there we go. We've successfully written this in Squeal instead of SQL. Now I think this is arguable whether it's really any cleaner than SQL, but one thing I really do like about this is that the values are in line directly in the query instead of uh, being all at the end of this where clause. Also, keep in mind this is just Ruby code we're dealing with here, so we could uh, just expand the block if we wanted to and split this up into multiple lines, maybe clarify things a little bit like that. We could also use uh, variables and then merge them all at the end if we wanted to. So now we can see if that squeal query works properly by performing a search and we get the exact same results. Looks like it works. Now it's important to be aware that squeal uses instance eval when it calls this block. So that means the current context in here, self, will no longer be the product class, but instead is a special squeal DSL instance. This is how the DSL works with calling column names as methods like this. But what if we want to a call a class method inside of our product from inside of that block? So let's say make a low stock method here and call low stock from inside of here. Well, let's try this out by reloading this page and it doesn't work. We get an SQL exception because Squeal interpreted that call as a column name. You can see I just put the low stock column name directly in the conditions query. So how do we get it to call the method instead? Squeal has sort of a neat workaround for this problem. If you make a call to my and then pass in a block, whatever's inside of here will be evaluated in the original context. So in this case, the product class. Now reloading this page and our query works again. Now if you want to customize some of Squeal's behavior, there's a generator provided for creating an initializer for doing so. Just run this command to create it. So now if you take a look under the config initializers directory, you'll find a Squeal config file with some comments explaining the various settings that you can change. For example, if you uncomment this, that'll add a few methods to hash and symbol to simulate the metaware functionality, which is really handy if you're transitioning from metaware, but otherwise it's recommended that you uh, use the new DSL that Squeal provides. And you can also add some aliases here as well. Well, that's about it for this quick look at Squeal, but there's quite a bit more to explore here. I recommend you check out the README for some great documentation. There are various goodies in here. For example, uh, you can access associations through key paths, and there's a feature called sifters, which are sort of similar to namescopes, but a bit more flexible. And there are subqueries you can do through Squeal and joins, and even function calls, which I think is pretty awesome to be able to do that in Ruby and have it evaluate to an SQL function call, and even SQL operators. So a lot of goodies in here. I recommend you check out the readme. And if you're feeling adventurous, you could take a look through the source code. The uh, Squeal DSL file is a good place to start. This is the object which gets evaluated from the block, and you can see here how it's turned into a blank slate. That's sort of kind of a cool trick. And various methods that you can call from inside of that block, and the method, method missing call to see how that works to handle the uh, Squeal DSL. All in all, Squeal is a really neat project. For me personally, I'm pretty comfortable with SQL and I don't know if the query improvements are big enough to always warrant its weight, but if you'd rather work with Ruby than SQL, definitely give it a try. You might like it. In this week's pro episode, I will show you various ways that you can rewrite a long SQL query using only active record and error. There I will show you how you can generate scopes dynamically, add an OR operator to active record relation, and add a powerful match method that really cleans up the query. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.